Join me in creating fun ephemera out of junk. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. One of my most popular videos is from about two years ago where I made ephemera out of junk. This is something I'm passionate about and makes me happy. So it's high time I film an update of that video. And by the way, you can find that video in my playlist dedicated to recycled items for junk journal below this video. So the junk item I want to use today is this part of a packaging. I think many of us have packaging like this and I know a lot of you collect these as well, which I find absolutely awesome. Personally, I really love this here. <laughs> That just kind of makes my day, I don't know. And I love the proportions. So that will be my substrate for today. And I've also already picked out a focal image. I found this book at my Goodwill a couple of years ago. It has really, really beautiful animal images in it. It's a German book. I unfortunately do not have an ISBN number for you, but I can show you all the information that's available here. So maybe you want to take a screenshot of that in case you want to look for this book. Let me give you a quick peek into what the images look like. So we have all species here. No, we don't need the snakes. Uh, <laughs> there's lots and lots of birds. Really cute. I've barely cut anything out from here yet. So I'm super happy to use some of these images. So cute. There's of course also other animals. Look at these cute bunnies. And you might think an obvious choice would be a bird. So yes, I'm going to use a bird, but I'm not going to use any of these bright and colorful ones. I'm going to use a very special one that I just happened to find flipping through this, which is this one right here. I know he doesn't look like the obvious choice, but he is very special. He is called a Schuhbill or in German Schuhschnabel. He's also known as the whale bill, the whale headed stork or shoe billed stork. <laughs> He's a very large, long legged wading bird with a typical height range of 110 to 140 centimeters, which is 43 to 55 inches. And some specimens reach as much as 152 centimeters or 60 inches. So that is almost as tall as me. That's crazy. And the name derives from its enormous shoe-shaped bill. The shoe bill lives in freshwater swamps of central tropical Africa. The species is most numerous in the West Nile subregion and South Sudan. It's unfortunately classified as vulnerable, meaning the species is at risk of becoming extinct. Estimates suggest there are only between 3,300 and 5,300 mature individuals left in the wild and populations are on the decline. As land is cleared from pasture, habitat loss is a major threat and sometimes cattle will trample on nests. What a shame that would be if this beautiful bird would become extinct. By the way, they're also very docile with humans. They will let humans come to them up to like two meters. That was the distance we had to keep during Corona. So he deserves a special piece of ephemera made just for him. So I think his size is perfect for this card. As usual, I have no idea what my background is going to look like. I usually like to think in baby steps, otherwise I get overwhelmed. So my first thought is how do I cover this? Because obviously we're not keeping it in this state. And one thing that came to mind is tea bags. So I have my box here of tea bags that I have been saving. As you can see, I have a lot. <laughs> 
and they make me happy. <laughs> So if you're new to junk journaling and you don't know how to get something like this, this is black tea. You can obviously do it with other types of tea. I think this one might be chamomile or green tea. I'm not sure yet. So obviously different types of tea will give you different results. So how I like to do it is after I steep my tea, I just press out all of the excess water and then I like to hang them up because that's the fastest way they will dry. Usually they will dry within 24 hours and then you simply open it where the either string or staple is, depending on how they're put together. You just open that and then you gently tear it apart at the seam. So this would be together like this and it would be folded and these corners would be folded in both the front and the back and you just open it here. And then you unfold it and then you gently just tear this middle apart. It usually comes apart very easily. So then you have these beautiful tea bag sheets. So how about I take these and for a first layer, I think I'm going to need one up here as well. I mean, this here looks super cool, doesn't it? I'm probably going to cover it with some more layers. I could also add more layers of tea bag. Why not? I think these three are going to be enough. I'm using my beloved Liquitex matte gel for this because it gives me a beautiful matte finish. You can use Mod Podge if you don't mind the glossy. You can use thin down glue, but those will most likely also be glossy. You could even use clear gesso, that works as well. I first heard about this beautiful bird on a German channel. I usually never watch German videos, but this one is an exception. And for anyone interested in animals, I highly suggest you check that channel out. I will link it below. It's called Mark Robert Lehmann. He founded a company called Mission Erde, so Mission Earth, and he's a wildlife photographer. He's also a marine biologist and many other things. And his channel is thankfully growing rapidly. So I just want to make sure that this hole is not covered. And he was on a mission to take photos of this beautiful bird and he took us along. Maybe I will specifically link that video as well as his channel. And it was just beautiful and breathtaking. And I'll tear this off. Oops, no problem. I can patch that up easily. It's really nice working with tea bag paper because it's so soft. And then I want to put this up here to cover that last bit. Please make sure you're working on a non-stick surface, something like freezer paper or baking paper if you use this method. <laughs> Otherwise, you will be very sad that you cannot lift your card without tearing. Just trying to bend that back. And then I also want to add this beautiful part up there. So let's try to be a little more strategic now. I'm not sure yet where exactly he's going, but probably middle-ish. So where can we put this so that it won't be hidden? How about like this? No, it's kind of too in your face, I think. I think I like it there better. And while we're at it, why not also add some fun book spine parts? Nothing too bulky. But look how gorgeous these pieces are. I love them. Nothing too big. I also have these small parts. Maybe this one here. So when you take away your books to make an altered book or to use the cover for a junk journal, make sure you also salvage the parts that are left on your block of pages. If they're vintage books, a lot of times they will have these beautiful spines and you can just 
tear them off if you're lucky it will come off in big pieces like this one but even if you only get little pieces i mean they're just gorgeous so again i think i need to place him here oh maybe for him to stand on mm, it's a bit chunky so maybe i'll just tear this down a little bit keeping the threads love that i love that yes okay so let's glue both of those down I want to make sure that the twine stays loose. I don't want to glue that down. Everything has dried in the meantime and I didn't expect that I would actually like this background as much as I do. I thought I would be covering up more of it with more opaque colors, but I really like some of this showing through. So I don't want to cover up everything. I kind of like the dramatic background this is giving me and I want to add some more drama to it while keeping a nature theme. And the way I'm going to do that is by using this leaf stencil. This one is from the Dutch chain Action. So I, I'm not able to link it, unfortunately. I'm going to use black acrylic paint and my flat stippling brush. As I have learned through many, many mistakes, I know that it's very important to have a very dry brush. So I'm loading it up with paint. And then before I go to my stencil, I'm going to swirl this on my paper towel to only have a small bit of paint on my brush. So this is almost dry. So this way we won't have any paint seeping through the stencil. Just want to see how to place that. I messed up a bit there because I think I moved it, but otherwise it's a perfect stencil. So that works really well. I'll just clean that part up here on the back because otherwise I will get that smudge again on my next print. Maybe best to dry this before I do another one. I don't want any smudging. You have to do this each time, of course, that you load it up with new paint. Oh, just perfect. Look how nicely this works. So give that a try if you've been having problems with stenciling not coming out. And then I'll use the same one, but turn it around so that the leaf shows the other direction. Again, I want to make sure there's no wet paint on it. So I have some of these leaves overlapping a bit. I have a bit of a gap here, which will be showing here. So, so I'll have to add some more stenciling here. Then I think I want another leaf tip coming out from his back. Yes, I am happy with that. Even though I love the look of this book spine piece here, I think it would also be really cool to make that look like wood. So I would need to paint this. And I'm going to try the Distress Stain Brushed Corduroy. So I'll just add some here. And paint right over that. It's a bit green. So maybe I'll add another color over that. Can I maybe... Wow, oh, maybe this is more efficient. <laughs> I'll add some ground espresso distress stain over that. Oh, this is super dark. I will dilute that a bit with water. Also want to cover this piece of twine here. Otherwise, that's going to stick out like a sore thumb. And I'm also going to add some undiluted here. And that would kind of be cool if that would drip down a little bit, right? No, not there. I 
is going behind the tea bag. That's not where I want it. <laughs> okay, it's going to keep doing that, but at least it gives the tea bag a little more definition, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> I feel like I need to cut this part off, even though I love the way it looks, but I think he will look better if his foot is standing on this wood here without all this here so i'm going to cut that away yes i think that's a lot better see this is why i cannot plan what my what my card is going to look like in the end because i have to see the stages to be able to see what it needs next you know what i mean i don't know if this is the way you work but this is definitely what works for me and I love the way he stands out on this dark background. I feel like I want to add a few more neutral scraps, maybe around the edges here. So I'm taking my two scrap boxes with my smaller scrap pieces. So these are the smallest scrap pieces I have. And then this is like the next smallest size. And then I have a bigger drawer for my bigger scraps. And that really works well for me. So let's check these smallest scraps. Maybe some green that could work maybe i should add some more of this so that that piece is not so alone and so that it doesn't look so alien i think once these are glued down they will integrate a little bit better into the card than what we're seeing now and then of course i want a third one hmm maybe not interesting Maybe a piece of this gorgeous paper underneath here. You know why I feel like the third one didn't work? Because we already have something up here. So I have my triangle with these three, even though the colors are different. Very interesting. Okay, so I'll glue these down and then we'll see if it needs anything else. I chose acrylic paint on purpose because I wasn't sure whether I would add anything else on top and if I would have used Distress Oxide, for example, that would have now smeared. So that was a very conscious choice. Unless you would then spray it maybe with a fixative or hairspray, then that would have worked. See, these blend in quite well. I have dried everything and it's time to cut all this excess away so that I can see the card better. This part is so satisfying. <laughs> That's like my favorite part. Do you know this feeling? <laughs> and I'm keeping the backside like this because I want to be able to see later on what this was. Very grungy. <laughs> But I think it really suits the theme because he lives in a swamp. I'm going to ink up the edges with forest moss. These make me so happy every time I see them. They just look so fun and colorful, don't they? <laughs> it's not visible at all. <laughs> a little bit, I guess, on the lighter parts here. Let's see, we might have to add a dark one as well. I'll add some black suit as well. Yes, that's more visible. You see that? I like it. Okay, finally, I'm ready to commit to gluing him down. Again, I'm using my Liquitex matte gel. Down here now, I have to be careful again because those stains are water soluble. So I think I'll glue his feet down with regular glue and not go over them like I'm doing here. And this card wouldn't be complete without some gold accents. <laughs> This time I'm going to use my Metallic Gold by Craft Emotions. This is a Dutch company. These are really nice because they smell like orange. Yeah, really nice smell. And they are soft enough to apply with a brush, which I really appreciate. And I have the wrong brush. Hang on. I have this brush, which I only use for this wax paste. Even though I've had this for quite a while now, it's still very nice and soft. So I want to go over some of these parts that are raised a little bit. 
Oh, look at how beautiful that is. That is going to make everything more magical. Oh my goodness. With a very light touch, especially where you see creases. Oh wow, I am so in love. Look at that. Especially with that dark grungy color underneath. Oh wow. Let's add some to our wood piece here as well. That would have been really good to do before I glued him on, right? Oh wow, I think that elevates the whole piece. I don't have any more crinkles or creases. Let's see what happens if we add some here with a super light touch. Yeah, some of the design will actually come through because that paper had like an embossed feel to it. Much better than I thought. Really important to have a light touch. Look at that. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. I think that's all we have. Oh, and look, we have a triangle with the gold. One, two, three. And since, of course, this wax hardens and it would, will also harden on my brush, all I do is to just rub it on my kitchen towel until there is no more pigment left. And then it stays nice and soft because you won't be able to wash it out, obviously. Good to go. And for a bit more contrast, I'm going to add some white splatters using thinned down white gesso and I hope to just get like these tiny maybe not that tiny but smaller splatters he's all dry I am super super happy with the outcome I'm happy to have such a beautiful, gentle creature on my card and, and I truly hope they don't become extinct so let's add him to a journal. And I figured the best place would be my Defemerember journal, since this is animal themed and still has a few pages left. If you're curious about this journal and don't know anything about Defemerember, I highly suggest you check out the playlist for this December daily series, which is a collaboration with my dear friend, Louisa Heinzel. In that playlist, you will also find a flip through of the completed journal. And I flipped through this briefly and I found a few pages that will actually work for our card. This journal still makes me so happy. Every time I flip through this, I feel so much joy. I would have really loved to put him in this belly band here with my moth so that the moth could protect him. And I think style-wise it would have fit really well, but he's too big, unfortunately, he doesn't fit. One option would be here. I think that would go quite well and I would still see part of Louise's embellishments. So I really, really like this option. I have a pocket available here, but he would completely be hidden. It would totally fit, but no, I want him visible. This feather also always makes me happy and makes me think of our dear friend, Rhonda Winstead. Hi, sweetie, in case you happen to be watching this. This one would also be quite okay. It would also fit in this one, but again, he would disappear too much. It looks cool, but I don't want him to vanish. He needs to be present. There was one more all the way in the back. This one here. And the reason why I really like this one is because 
The background is light, so he really comes out well. But also, what I really like is you see how the oxides here come into the page and they remind me of flames. Also here from the top, it, it, it looks like the flames are coming closer and they're endangering his habitat. So that kind of is what his story is, maybe not by flames, but his habitat is in danger because of various reasons. So I think this would symbolize the danger the best. I don't want to just glue it on because I want the back to stay visible if I want to. So I want to attach the card in a way that I can take it off. The easiest thing would be to just poke a hole here and set a brad that is big enough so that wouldn't fall through. But I don't want to poke a hole in here because this is a page that Louisa made for me and he just makes me so happy and I always have to brush over his furry belly. <laughs> He's just so adorable. So I don't want to mess with this page. But there is another option of how I could attach him so that I can still remove him later. I'm going to use this piece of fabric, which is rust dyed. And the plan is to put this through here. And then I'll, I'll cut some of it off. And to glue the fabric piece here with two magnets underneath. And then we can also glue two magnets here. And then we can just flip this over and we couldn't remove him anytime by just releasing the magnets. What do you think? So I have these tiny magnets, which are really strong. I will link these for you from Amazon Germany, but let me first cut this down. I do want it peeking out of the journal a little bit because that's always fun, not too much because I have my dragonfly up there as well. I don't want this to get in the way. So I'll place the two magnets. Barbara, open your glue bottle. I keep doing this. <laughs> One, two. I'm always amazed at how strong they are, even though they are so small. I think they're four millimeters in diameter. Yeah, oh, look at that. <laughs> they are really strong. <laughs> you stay put. Come on, be good. No. <laughs> it's like they're in love and they can't bear to be without each other. Then we'll put more glue over them. Then we'll add two more magnets on top so that we have them in the correct position. Well, now they're cheating on each other, right? <laughs> and then we'll add some glue on top of these. and glue our fabric on and that now obviously needs to dry really well it's about 20 minutes later and it has dried a little bit and i realized you probably realized this when you saw me do this that i can't let it dry while it's closed because then obviously the two fabrics are going to be stuck together so what i did was i opened this again thankfully i noticed that before the glue had dried and I glued the two magnets on this side and then I covered it with another piece of that same fabric. I realized what would have been a lot smarter to do was to glue the two magnets here and then to just flip the piece of fabric over the magnets. That would have been prettier, but I'm fine with this. And now I have this magnetic closure, which works really well. And this will stay in place and I can still remove it. So that makes me happy. I hope you're inspired to use your packaging and other pieces of junk. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah. I watch you as you dry. Do you know I'm looking? And I can't help but smile. Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song